Hey guys, what's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint, and today we're gonna be talking about should MMO, all MMO, all massively multiplayer, you know, FPS, RPG, whatever guys, should all MMO be free to play? And now I'm bringing up this question because I think a lot of people, there's a giant audience specifically for free to play MMO games. Definitely with my work at, you know, over at free MMO station, I have definitely seen that. And I, you know, myself, I'm definitely biased in, with the regard that I want the, I want these games to be popular. I want them to be popular. I want to play them because I want that massive experience. So to have that MMO, the true MMO experience, I need a massive population playing these games. And if, you know, if they're like buy to play, if they're subscription based, then sometimes that's really more catered toward a niche audience. So games like Albion Online, their population wanes and then there's essentially no reason to actually play them. And that's a fucking tragedy. But that's not always the case. Uh, I found guys, and I'm gonna make this argument that it's not always the price that stops people from playing a game or not. Like Albion Online actually has a ton of players. Well, it has a ton of owners. A ton of people actually own the game. It's just right now the population is waning because of you know the the things that are going on inside the game. Black Desert costs money, and you could see it was tremendously popular. World of Warcraft is extremely expensive. Final Fantasy XIV extremely expensive, and they still actually have a really good population. Games like WildStar. Uh, which actually had a subscription and was a boxed game, it died for reasons other than the fact of its monetization. And as you can see, when it went free to play, it didn't really ever recover from that. So there's more to it than just the price. Yes, I will agree with you that as a consumer, free is pretty awesome. And this is actually where I'm going to come at this argument, but it's not always the real reason. Okay. It's not the real reason why games are dying. Okay. It's not the real reason why some, okay, well, some games do get popular just because they are a free alternative, but not always, not always. There's normally something else added to the formula and that, that, that extra, you know, uniquity is, is really what makes the game special. I mean, uh, the, duh, it's unique, special, it's the same thing, whatever, fuck it. You guys know what I'm saying, guys. Um, so it's not always just the fact that a game is free or that a game is a AAA game, okay? We've seen AAA games fail to indie games that, you know, actually competed with them. It's not always the case. So here's my argument, guys. So I was, I was just like you. I was thinking, yo, every MMO needs to be free to play so it can be as popular as possible, keep the community as fresh as possible. But there's actually some downsides. Okay, so for one, you know, bots. Bots is the thing, but then again, bots... People will bot subscription-based games, too. They, they'll do that. It just, it's just going to happen. But it, it does help to, you know, have some sort of paywall. You're actually going to see this in a lot of mobile games. Uh, that's the stamina system. In mobile games, that's normally... Okay, yes, it definitely incentivizes microtransactions, but it also helps curve bots. Yeah, so that's kind of why Black Desert has it. Um, so I, the main thing that I want to talk about, though, with, with free-to-play versus paid is this. Okay, so Guild Wars... T yeah, Guild Wars 2, guys. Guild Wars 2 actually has paid cosmetics, okay? So this is kind of how the game fuels itself. I know it's buy to play, but it's it's also kind of free to play. And this is taking, you know, the, the like, they have all these seasonal updates, right? And normally for those constant and consistent updates, you would pay a subscription. So these microtransactions are taking the place of that subscription. But here's the problem. Since the game is incentivized to create microtransactions that are cosmetics, Mm, it makes the game kind of almost, almost, a little bit al almost pointless. Okay, and by, by, like if you play Guild Wars 2, you know that the main point of the game, like the end game of Guild Wars, is really Easter egg hunting. Like you're collecting things and you're collecting cosmetics for your character. But if like the biggest and best cosmetics are in the cash shop, which is also very true with Black Desert Online, I will say. So there's lots of other games that are actually in incorporating this. But in MMOs, normally to show off your character and to show off your, you know, your your conquest, to show off your 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 you know your quest, to show off your achievements, you normally have epic armors, epic weapons, and you walk around town and people are like, oh fuck, dude, he's got that mount. That means he did that really cool thing. So that means that guy's really cool. But when you shift that to a cash shop system, well, yeah, then. <laughs> Then like people just buy the cool armors and I guess they look cool, but there's no achievement added to it Okay, there's nothing to it So that that is my big argument there if I wanted to play an MMO and I really wanted to show off my character and show off my feats Right my feats of achievement Um, then I would really rather have the cash shop not have those things also in the cash shop I'd rather have the game reward me directly for customization um, for being creative, and, and Guild Wars 2 definitely does this with the legendaries, and they're adding in legendary armor pieces and stuff like that, supposedly, I don't know. Um, and you can customize it with dyes and everything, so that's super cool. Uh, but still, still, actually, like, a lot of the stuff that maybe would be really fucking cool to earn in-game, maybe like instruments or something, crafting those, or 
I don't know, maybe, maybe getting certain pets and things, uh, you know, as achievements. And some of them are, kind of, but most of it, most of the stuff that really would work as an achievement, kind of show off -y kind of thing, you just buy in the cash shop. So, yeah, that kind of sucks, dude. In a, in a way, I don't know, man. If, if your end game is cosmetics, then buying the cosmetics is kind of pay to win. I'm just, I know that's bullshit. I know that's bullshit, but like a lot of people actually feel that. Maybe it doesn't make sense rationally in your brain, but you feel that. What, you feel that. Okay, so a lot of people don't play MMOs for that, though. I will I will say that. A lot of people play MMOs, you know, just because they want to play the content. The content, they don't care about what their character looks like or anything. Uh, they're just in it. They're going to go one and done. They just run through the content and done. So why not make that content free? Okay, well, I already said bots. So that does kind of in hinder a uh, player. It does kind of, you know, it, it de-immerses, demerses. Fuck the words, dude. Fuck English language. Um, it makes you, <laughs> makes you unimmersed. <laughs> And uh, so there, there's that, there's bots, um, but they're also the, the quality, the quality control. Now, I guess you could argue that if they have an amazing cash shop, maybe something like League of Legends or Smite with amazing cosmetics that people really, really want, then they don't need a subscription base, right? Um, maybe, maybe that's true, and then maybe they can still have really amazing content. But here's the thing, if, the, if they are incentivized to create cosmetics versus creating content, you know, like the one and done thing, then you're gonna have situations like Guild Wars 2 where for long periods of time, we don't actually get the seasonal events that we were promised in Guild Wars 2, which is essentially the point of Guild Wars 2. So yeah, for long periods of time, you're not gonna get anything. Then again, I mean, that can happen in, in a sub-based game, which is why a lot of people unsubbed during Warlords of Drainer. I think you guys know what I'm talking about there too. Uh, however, if you pay a subscription, you're supposed to get consistent and amazing, like, updates, right? Updates for quality of life, engine updates to the game, which did happen in World, World of Warcraft. Amazing end game, totally new content, remixing classes, you know, true updates, and that's why you pay the subscription, because you're paying a premium to have that premium experience for the best servers that they can really afford to just, just kind of do the best that they possibly can and to create the best amount of content. That's what you're paying for. Now, I personally don't agree in having a boxed version and a subscription version. I feel like World of Warcraft should just, you know, the free trial, and then you pay for the subscription to keep going. That, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with either being sub-based, either being box-based, or being completely free-to-play with a cash shop. I don't like mixing and stuff. I think that's really fucking weird. Like, free-to-play games that have, an, like, a, like, a subscription alternative, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. It's just weird. It's like, if you're gonna go one way, go one way. And uh, that's, that's how it is. But guys, when, whenever uh, a developer chooses to be free to play or to be buy to play, that will change the gameplay. That's going to change how they incentivize, like how they are incentivized and where they should uh, create, you know, and how they should, you know, mold the game. Right. So it's not it's not just about the consumers. It's not just about the players, kind of, in a way. So if a game's free, fuck yeah, dude, you can go and play the content. But because it is free, that content that you are playing can change. And you're, we're playing MMOs, right? MMOs are supposed to be persistent. They're supposed to be evolving. They're supposed to be uh, something that you can do for a while or um, maybe jump back into. They're, they're supposed to be living, breathing entities, like, like, like constantly evolving events, okay? Not just a product, not just a service. They are events that are constantly fucking exploding like fireworks. Fourth of July every day. But I mean, okay, it's not every day. It's like every expansion, you know, 4th of July, woo! New expansion, hype! Uh, but in order for that to happen, they need money. And they need money coming from the right places, uh, and they need a certain amount of money, and I'm just saying, there's an incentivization, guys. If you buy cash shop items, they're gonna wanna buy, they're gonna wanna make more of those type of cash shop items. So if a game, let's say this, if a game sells experience boosts, like a game like Terra, for instance, where the game, it, like basically the end game is the entire game, you know, then guess what? They're going to make the game kind of fucking grindy and boring and monotonous oh, just a little bit. Okay, I, I will say the max level leveling is kind of cool. But when you're super low, basically for 90% of the game, you're leveling and you're so incentivized to buy experience boost. And there's a lot of mobile games that do this. Like I said, with the stamina system, uh, there's stamina systems in there to counter bots, right? Okay, so yeah, you can do that too. Uh, you can spend money to bypass that. So they, they create all these gates and they're incentivized to create more content that gives you more gates that incentivizes you to spend more money. That's just how it is, guys. Really, the probably the best way, and you're going to see a lot of older people say this, is the best way to go about an MMO is probably a subscription, okay? It's probably a subscription because that makes people, that makes the developers Blizzard or freaking Square Enix, okay? It makes them want to create new content to keep you inside the game. 
Now, Guild Wars 2 is doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. However, they're they're doing like uh, they're doing kind of like an expansion thing. So it's almost like a sub fee in a way. Like there's a constant boxed uh, version. But then again, World of Warcraft totally fucking does that. You got to buy the box version and still subscribe. Oh my god, I hate that. Uh, but then again, its cash shop isn't as detrimental to the game as Guild Wars 2 is. Yeah. So if you see somebody in uh, World of Warcraft with a cool ass armor set and weapon, then they probably earned it kind of a little bit, except for. This new expansion, everybody has legendary weapons, but whatever. Anyways, guys, that's all I'm saying, guys, is if a game is, you know, if they're, if it's built a certain way, if its monetization is a certain way, that actually kind of does affect and impact the true genre of the game. I'm not somebody to say, I'm not somebody to say that free-to-play games is a genre, because a lot of people look down on just free-to-play games. But at the same time, in a way, almost, there is a reason why there's a trend with uh, certain games, you know, being, you know, Pay to win, money grubby when they are free to play versus buy to play, but not always. As we saw with uh, you know some certain games, certain other games, certain other games. But thanks for watching, guys. That's all I got to say. It's a rant. I know. I, I understand. But uh, hopefully you had fun. My name's Skyler, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.